Good day everyone, so today we'll be discussing about shipboard operations and procedures of cargo handling. So this is prepared and presented by Group 3. Group 3 is led by Hintalian Jesper Jesse, yours truly, my assistant Soliano Jason, and the members Pipito Mark Alan, Libago Sam, Gonzalez Bonmarl Anthony, Asidelia Mark Kester, and Armando Antonio Jr. Our intended learning outcome for this presentation is that at the end of the lesson, uh, we hope that our students shall be able to elaborate shipboard operations and procedures of cargo handling. Major sections of this presentation includes general, um, cargo storage, cargo securing, ship's equipment, general safety precaution, ventilation, stability, communication, and repair of damage incurred during loading and unloading of cargo. It is a common knowledge between marineers that the master is accountable for the safety of the cargo from the port of loading to the discharge port as per the agreement of carriage. So it is also the master's uh, um, responsibility to ensure that the cargo offered for shipment is properly carried during the voyage and this includes ensuring that the cargo is um, properly stowed, handled, secured, and monitored during the voyage. It is the responsibility of the carrier to uphold periodic checks, maintain regular rounds of the cargo decks, and implement any requirements, special requirements which have been advised by the shipper. Cargo stowage. This operation should always be supervised by a ship's officer. Loading procedures should be adhered to and cargo should only be moved um, if directed by a ship's officer or a person trained in vehicle deck operations because if um, you will supervise a non-trained personnel in these operations, accidents may occur and may lead uh, to damage to the cargo or to the property of the vessel itself. Also, communication is a very important factor in cargo storage. And so prior to uh, loading and unloading of cargo or any operations on board, communication channels must always be agreed upon um, the personnel who, who will be participating in the operation. And so uh, the, the master must um, establish a, a well-built communication channel between all personnel that will be involved in the operation. Stewage should only be in the fore and aft direction. If art worship stowage is necessary, then this should be discussed with the master. Stowage should not hinder us from any access to any equipment or controls uh, for access doors, access to um, sounding pipes, stairways, and so on. Ergo, stowage of cargo should always be carefully planned and strategically um, executed within the operation. With regards to cargo securing, the following notes provides us some guidance as to some of the important considerations when um, securing cargo. These considerations include cargo should always be secured in accordance with the approved cargo um, securing manual. So this cargo securing manual is a standard procedures for securing um, cargo. Uh, following these um, standard procedures will ensure you that your cargo are properly secured. Um, also, cargo securing equipment should be well maintained and certified as per requirement of the cargo securing manual or safety management system. Um, because um, to, to properly secure your cargo, you must have uh, your cargo securing equipment 100% functional and are well maintained in order to um, properly um, or effectively do its purpose that's why uh, your cargo securing equipment must uh, pass the upper requirements of the cargo securing manual or the safety management system next consideration is that cargo should preferably be secured in the fore and aft direction and vehicles should be properly parked the engine switched off and brakes applied prior to being secured also, wheels should also be chalked in order to ensure that your vehicles are properly secured in that in the um, vehicle deck. Fragile cargo should be stowed towards the center line of the ship and on lower decks. 
Also be reminded that lashings on vehicles should all be under equal tension and securing should be completed prior to leaving birth in order to avoid any accidents. Special consideration should be made for large vehicles, tracked vehicles, and any cargo with high center of gravity with additional lashings applied. Also consideration should be given to weight of the cargo, the dimensions, expected sea conditions, and stowage position on the ship. Where cargo is stowed at the ends of the ship and on the upper cargo decks, we should be reminded that additional precautions should be taken when lashing to minimize the large forces that will act on cargo in heavy sea due to pitching. Ship's equipment. The following notes refers to the use of the ship's equipment. Only authorized, properly trained, and competent personnel should operate ship's equipment such as forklifts, movable decks, car platforms, and cargo ramps in order to avoid accidents that could lead cargo damage, loss of life, and so on. Next is equipment used for cargo operations should be fit for purpose, tested, certified, and not subjected to more than its certified safe working load. So every equipment on board has a certified safe working load. Um, you must not use those equipments more than what's specified in the cert certified safe working load. And um, all equipments for cargo operation should be fit for, for the purpose of it and be tested and certified that it's functional and <clears throat> safe to use for the cargo operations. Loose equipment should be stowed and lashed prior to departure. Next is emergency equipment to handle leaks and spillage should be available on all car decks since um, car decks are more prone to fire especially when there are spillage of either oil or fuel. Um, emergency equipment that could handle these leaks and spillage should be always available and easy access on car decks. Lastly, cargo securing gear should be of sufficient strength for cargo carried. The general safety precaution of cargo handling. Crew working on vehicle decks should wear appropriate personal protective equipment at all times including high visibility vest to safeguard yourself from any harm and accidents that may occur on board. The risk of fire on a vehicle deck is a real possibility given the nature of the cargo. So ship's crew should enforce the no smoking rules and ensure that signage is clearly visible. In addition to that, the location of firefighting equipment should be clearly marked and all apparatus checked on a regular basis in order to ensure that those equipments are 100% functional and ready to use when there are accidents such as fire happens on board. The stowage of cargo should not obstruct the access to fire hydrants or firefighting equipment at any time during loading or discharge. Those equipments should be ensured that they are accessible any time of the day. Lighting on the vehicle decks and access should be checked regularly. Next, any spillage of either oil or fuel from vehicles should be cleaned up immediately if necessary. Cargo operations should be suspended until the area is considered safe in order to avoid any start of fire. Safe access to the ship should be monitored during cargo operations. All cargo rams and pilot personnel access doors should be provided with a life buoy and a self-activating light while the ship is alongside. Lastly, safe the rails and nets should be correctly positioned prior to the commencement of cargo operations and maintained in place for the duration of the operation. Ventilation is also a very important factor in cargo handling. Vehicle decks should be adequately ventilated at all times. This may require ventilation fans to be operated continuously during short passages to remove accumulation of hazardous gases and fumes. Officers should pay particular attention during loading or discharge when there may be an accumulation of fumes on the vehicle decks. In addition, the carriage of flammable gases or liquids will require additional ventilation in order to safeguard those cargoes and um, avoid any occurrence of fire on uh, vehicle decks and any um, cargo holds. Stability so before discussing um, the importance of stability in cargo loading, let us discover first what is stability. So stability is the ability of the ship to float um, in an upright position and if inclined by external forces, can return to this upright position. So the importance of ship stability should not be underestimated. 
the chief officer or officer responsible to the master for the ship stability should ensure that all relevant information relating to the cargo, both discharged and loaded in the current port, is provided to the master. That the master is aware of any cargo that has been shifted within the ship during the cargo operations, as this will have an effect on the final dis distribution of loads within the ship and the final departure condition. So keep in mind that the ship's aqua tank condition should be accurately checked by soundings and recorded prior to the departure condition for the ship uh, being calculated. So this should include all fuel, oil, and water ballast tanks. It is also important to ensure that the ullage within the tanks is minimized to reduce any free surface effect on the ship's stability. And if sounding gauges are not available, the manual sounding should be taken to confirm tank contents. So in accurate tanks, soundings can quickly add up and lead to critical losses and stability, which could lead to capsizing of the vessel. So it is very important uh, to know um, stabili the stability of your ship upon cargo loading um, in order to um, avoid any um, um, capsi capsizing of the vessel because of um, unstable stability. Uh, stability calculation to determine the ship's departure condition should be carried out on completion of cargo operations and prior to the ship's departure. So the calculation should take into account the actual tank conditions or the soundings and be reconciled with the draft readings observed on completion of cargo operations. So any discrepancies between the loading computer or calculated results and the draughts or sounding shall, should be investigated and clarified before departure. So also sufficient time should be allowed for the stability calculation to be completed following the completion of cargo operations prior to the departure of the ship. So it is important to have an ample time with, uh, with regards to the calculation of the, the ship's stability. Um, the chief officer and the master should ensure that open communication is maintained to ensure that any issues can be dealt with as required and the master should ensure that the ship's um, calculated stability meets or exceeds the IMO stability requirement for the entire duration of the intended voyage in order to avoid any accidents. If there is any doubt as the actual stability condition of the ship, then the departure of the ship should be delayed until such time that the master is satisfied that adequate stability of the ship has occurred. I already have mentioned earlier the importance of communication in all aspects of operation on board. And so I would like to um, remind you again that the master should ensure to establish a clear and well-built um, communication channel between all crews on board, especially those who will engage in any operation on board. And so the following are the things that we should be um, aware about with regards to communication on board. Clear lines of communication should be agreed by all parties engaged in cargo operations. Crew should remain vigilant throughout cargo operation and should be encouraged to report any irregular observation or concerns to the cargo officer as soon as possible. Also, personnel engaged with cargo operation should, as far as practicable, not be given additional duties which may interfere with their primary task. All crews should be encouraged to openly discuss to raise any concerns or issues that they have and that relate to safety on board with a senior officer at any time. With regards to the repair of damage incurred during loading and unloading, there are things that we should always remember. If damage to the ship's structure or equipment occurs during loading or unloading, it shall be reported by the terminal representative to the master and if necessary repair. But if the damage could impair the structural capability and watertight integrity of the hull or the ship's essential engineering systems, the administration of the flag state or an organization recognized by it and acting on its behalf shall be informed by the terminal representative and the master. The decision as to whether immediate repair is necessary or whether it can be deferred shall be taken by the administration of the flag state or the organization recognized by it and acting on its behalf. Thank you for watching.